Today we're going to be building my brand new PC with a 13th gen Intel Core desktop processor, specifically the Core i9-13900K. We're also going to be taking a look at the Core i5-13600K. So with the new 13th gen processors, you get more cores, more threads, and faster clock speeds, which will allow for better performance across the board, whether that's gaming, video editing, or 3D modeling. Improved P-Core performance allows for a better gaming experience with more FPS, and extra E-Cores offer more flexibility, especially when you're multitasking. So let's talk about the Core i5-13600K. This has 14 total cores, so that is 6 P-Cores and 8 E-Cores, 20 threads, as well as a max turbo frequency of 5.1 GHz. With the Core i9-13900K, we have 24 total cores, that's 8 P-Cores, 16 E-Cores, and 32 threads. You also get a max turbo frequency of 5.1 8 gigahertz. Also cross compatible with 600 and 700 series chipset motherboards. For example, you can use a Z690 motherboard, just make sure the BIOS is updated. Or you could pick up something like this, a Z790 motherboard for the extra features. 13th gen processors also support DDR4 and DDR5, so you can choose your preference as long as your motherboard supports it. And that offers you more choice because you can choose to stick with DDR4 or go all out and upgrade to a brand new system with DDR5, which is actually what I'm gonna be doing in this video. I've already briefly showed off the motherboard, but this is the ASUS RG Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi. It supports DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5. There is a ton of IO at the back. You get a physical power button on the motherboard, as well as a quick release button for the top PCIe slot. Not to mention the design also, in my opinion, looks amazing. For the case, we are going with the NZXT H7 Flow. Look at all this ventilation at the front panel. In many cases, I feel like you can't go wrong with NZXT. This is fairly easy to build in, and I like the design. For the cooler, we're gonna go with the NZXT Kraken Z73. It features a 360 millimeter radiator, a customizable LCD display on the pump block, which honestly is my favorite part. All this surface area will offer extra thermal headroom, which we will need for this build. For the RAM, I'm gonna go with PNY's XLR8, 32GB, 6000MHz DDR5 kit. It's not the best looking, there's no RGB on this, but it works. For storage, I'm gonna go with the WD Black SNA50X. This is a super fast Gen 4 NVMe SSD, and this particular one has two terabytes, which is gonna be more than sufficient. For the power supply, I'm gonna go with the NZXT C1000, 80 plus gold rating, and 1000 watts should offer enough headroom for all these parts. For the graphics card, I'm gonna use the EVGA RTX 3080 Ti XC3 Ultra, and I say this so casually like it's just another graphics card, but this should offer great performance. For the fans, which we have a lot of, I'm gonna use the brand new Lian Li SL120 V2s. I have nine of them right here. I'm only gonna be using seven, but these look awesome and the daisy chaining is also really cool. Without further ado, let's start building.
I tried out a few games with this system, all running at 1440p, mostly high settings, and this is all running Windows 11 with the latest Windows updates and the latest Motherboard BIOS update as of recording this video. First up was COD Warzone 2. I honestly have not played COD in a few months, so I made the mistake of shooting at this sniper glint. I rushed at this person and tried drop shotting. Ultimately, I lost, but uh, I gotta say performance was definitely pretty smooth. I got around 110 to 115 FPS. A similar story with Fortnite Battle Royale. Gameplay was smooth. I was able to get a couple kills. One was a not so quick quick scope. FPS ranged from about 120 to 130 and it dipped and spiked a few times. Last but not least, a game that I'm really trying to get better at, Valorant. I got a quick 4k and one of my teammates stole a kill so I didn't get that ace. And Valorant, generally speaking, is a very light game to run so I was easily getting over 400 FPS. And for some synthetic benchmarks, I ran Cinebench R23 with the multi-core and the single core tests. On the multi-core side with the Core i5-13600K, it scored 23,618. And with the Core i9-13900K, it scored a whopping 38,689. As for the single core scores, the Core i5-13600K scored 1,910. And the Core i9-13900K scored 2,184. Overall, I really love how this build turned out. Performance is amazing and I can throw almost anything at this PC. If there's one thing I can improve on, it's probably to swap the RAM kit for some RGB sticks just to pop in some extra color. If you want to learn more about Intel's new 13th gen core desktop processors, I'll link all the relevant information in the description section of this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like as well as subscribing to support the channel. Thank you for watching.